good for Legacy. They've not shown up to play, and M80 look ruthless. Heading in towards their map pick, heading in towards Ancient. They've had great moments, and yes, a couple of hiccups on this one, but it goes about saying confidence has been at an all-time high for M80 on this pick, and that's why there's a real chance. It goes about saying we need to see a completely different Legacy. They were a shadow of their former selves, and we saw against MIBR in that first map. So what do we get here is the question, now, Cody. It's interesting, right, because M80 had this very similar first map performance against Wildcard yesterday. Of course, different map, different circumstances, and different NA derby there. This is North America versus South America, and the half time they had, uh, they had after that first map mm. for Wildcard really reinvigorated them. Stan came alive, but of course, at the end of that best of three, they couldn't convert. Has Cold been able to kind of disseminate some of his experience onto the rest of the team to be able to bring it back? It's true. Neck is is spotted, but Dumao might go unchecked. He does. Malbs down. He falls around that corner. So at the very least, now there's something to work with. Opening kills eluded Legacy in that first map. They really struggled to find them time and time again. It let them down, but it's not going to be the case here as Dumao finds the opening couple. And now we have a conversation on our hands. It makes you look a little lost here on this pistol. Yeah, notably it was Legacy starting on the T side where those opening frags are really, really crucial to yeah. ensure that you can, of course, find your, uh, your entry into a bomb site. Now starting on the CT and finding them here, shadows and shimmers of what we saw towards the end of that first map of Overpass. Neck is holding the off angle with Dumao behind Big Box. Needs to be an absolutely huge display of form here from M80's Wreck and Death to be able to come back into this one. And Death find not opening kill onto Demao. Maybe now, closing the gap, there's an opportunity for them as the flash and the nades go in. Bomb gets planted. Wreck there with the backup. Oh my god, he could go massive here. Thinks one down, but not going to be able to convert that into the kill as of yet. Three versus two. Wreck now finding another. This is happening now. I can't believe it. Wreck's hiding behind the wall. Death's still there on the sidelines. About to back him up. We've called zero on one HP. Bartan, who's been so crisp on these pistols round after round. Is he going to be able to convert this one? Also, Rek just toying with his food at this point with the bomb planted and no defuse kit. It's looking like it's possible. No. Rek looking for four kills. Is there time? Oh my Lord, I don't think there is. No, there is. It's clear. Oh, legacy. That is way too close for comfort. Down to a 1v1 and it's the 1 HP Cold Zera. Who does my it? Man alive. Wreck made an opportunity out of nothing. And I even credit to Def as well. So low, sticks that plant and then sets himself up inside of the smoke as well. So Legacy don't lose control all of them. Dumao started this round so well. Three kills to his name, sumptuous shots, and it very quickly crumbled. It's that man there, Colzera, to close it, to clutch up something he's oh too familiar with. For Legacy to find the first notch on the board, and man alive. For a Legacy off the back of what was a rough map, it goes without saying, so necessary, so damn necessary. Of course, it goes without saying, we expect to buy out from M80 in towards the second round off the back of the one plant. And then once again, going back towards A here. Cold Zero again, came up huge in that previous round. Can he go for a second? Yes, Molly out of Temple. Neck is and Dumao up close, and Dumao, we saw what he did in towards the last. How have they learnt their lesson? Well, a smoke deep will help, but Neck is in front of it. Neck is Ooh. looking to find one, but <gasps> Malves finds two. Headshots from him, the hand cannon doing as the namesake says. Dumao dropped, they'll open up this round for M80. And now we start to look back at Legacy and think, lads, what have you got to work with? Well, Death will deliver even more pain as Lato does fall himself. And the Flash will buy him some time, which is seriously ticking. One has already rotated. Cold Zero will stick around for a moment to see if he can stay alive. But this is around for M80. Yeah, with no kit here from Cold. Of course, there was no one to fell him in that previous round when he could stick that 10 second, but... This time round, it's just not happening. An amazing response here from the T side of M80. Malbs again coming massive. With the deagle in hand, we saw it in the very first best of one that M80 played inside of mid. He was making problems for his opponents. And now he's doing it, executing onto a bomb site this time round. Love it. Brilliant. Let's take a look at these again. Because we saw this on the other side, right? So quick from Malbs. Man alive, that is beautiful work from him. Cracking open. He's sight, and of course through Donut. 
getting very little coverage. All tied square. And of course, I mean, the expectation here is the force by back in. This is how all of these games will start. Force by wars, but Legacy bring considerably less to the table. Slax will be in trouble, but it's Rek who bails him out for one. Dumao still gets his kill and a smoke to give him some space to get out of there. Yeah, falls back onto the bomb site. Damage has been done. Getting the one for one trade there, considering the buy for Legacy. They're going to be pretty content with. They can now stack up inside of mid, as we're going to be seeing. The pistol of Demao, Lato, need to go huge. The backup here from Demao as well, as the rest of his team are going to swing into mid just in case they can catch someone on a timing. It's not going to be the case. Don't know if the information would have been heard as they slow it down, rotating back towards the actual site. Out of main, we're going to have three of the four remaining M80 players begin their execute. Molly goes down, far turn up, close and personal. Going to be able to find one. Wreck. Finds two. Demao trades. And now on a two versus two, health advantage going towards the CT side. This could turn on its head again. Swisher so far away here. Malibs has got to stay alive. 45 seconds to work with Bombs the bomb. Well. It's just in no man's land. This is the worst part about this. Low on you to low on health. Oh. But Swisher finds a way. Cold Air is all that's left. Needing another clutch out of the king. Got one of the pistol. Looks for a second as the Molly tickles the toes. But he's still left alive. Burn to a crisp, but three points of HP keep him breathing as he looks for this frag as time starts to tick. Swisher's got to make a move. Got to do something, and he will. Swisher sees it off. A sigh of relief for M80. But all that matters is a round one. The four spy of Legacy put to bed, and M80 claw back a lead. Yeah, Cole was blind when the Molly came in as well, so I don't think he knew how far he needed to run. <laughs> he knew he had to get behind Big Box, but he gets there. The screen stops turning white, and he's like, oh, crap, where's my HP gun? I'm on three. This is going to be incredibly hard. Of course, we saw him win with one HP in that pistol round, but Swisher just quicker on the trigger. And now it's going to be USPs across the board. Four-man committal inside of, well, mid. Not, uh, not deep, but just sitting inside a red room, having a little bit of a mother's meeting. Yeah, already decent control here towards B. Oh, this in flashing through drag. Job. Nobody here, yeah. I mean, flash over towards mid, but Malbs isn't committing. This is a smart way to play it if you're M80. Just don't overextend if you're going to go for a fight in towards mid. Yes, there's a smoke, but it's still a risk. A fight found and Malbs double away. Doesn't overextend. Barely caught by that one either. And spots him in towards Cubby. He doesn't actually have to stick around here. Malibs is more of an information player. He does have the support too, so it gives him a lot of room to work with. And the main thing is they're over on towards the B site. So Bomb goes down. That should be the round. But we question what Legacy can do in terms of exit frags. Any constellation kills could actually be quite important here. The fact that T-Spawn is fully under T-Control right now and uh, Legacy haven't lurked to play her through there to be able to poke and prod and gain some information and gain some ground for these exits, mm. I think means that MAT are going to be able to keep all five players up here unless we see a huge push from Legacy. But, I mean, there's nothing to lose. You haven't committed anything into this round other than really minor util. So you might as well push on through. Cold Zero treating that like a wall instead of the smoke that it is. And here comes the barrage of CTs as they begin their push onto Swisher and Slacks, but they are crisp and clean with it. And, oh, but they do get tagged down. You know what? I think Legacy are going to be okay with that. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's one of those things. I, for, for, for Swisher and Slacks individually, just making sure that nothing saved, there's also nothing gained too, right? And then on the other side, yes, they die, but plenty of money. They can buy back in. Not the end of the world just yet. Three to one. Good start for M80. Legacy out for a buy of their own. Cold Zera. Building the AWP. We need to see him find form. We need to see this guy pop off. At times, he was the only man finding that form in map one, but it's do Mal to step up early. In through mid, the supporting flash is beautiful. Malbs falls early to the wayside. So Legacy with an opening kill. A round needed to be converted to keep this game competitive in its early stages, and that's the dream start. Yeah, Dumao seems to be the primary person finding all of the open, opening kills. Every mm. single round inside of mid, it seems to come at his hands. Which is great. Legacy have just struggled to convert the rest of it. After he falls back and isn't the first face that people start running into, the rest of the team aren't there to be able to, well, close it on out. Minute on the clock. M80 needs to make a decision. And as of right now, they've shown presence into mid, nothing towards B, the CTs begin their rotation away as the Ts start gaining Jag control, Cave control, 
soon. Sight control as the smoke's coming. Back in the corner. Barton was a close here. Slabered spray and death will punish. Barton will fall and so will Dumal. As Slack's out range, gonna make that all do its work. And another pot flash as well to keep Nekis at bay. They can't push through the smokes, the walls in front of them. Keep them at bay. The Lasso will crack open that door a tad. A three versus three. And there's a world to work with here. Time starts to tick, however, and Cold Zera, a pixel spotted and all that's needed for Slacks. With the Sniper, Swisher gonna swing as well. Barrel spotted, but Spray missed, and so with the orb shot as well. And now Rex in a little bit of trouble, Slacks as well, and own quantity, but Slacks don't miss those. Stuck in towards the corner, Rex will peak on timing. And M80 gonna make a round out of that. Three round buffer zone to work with. This is massive for the confidence. Already more competitive than what we saw at the start of the first map, of course. Legacy mm. not only finding a round, but also being able to trade frags back and back instead of just M80 running away. Remember, that was a 10-1 yeah. beginning, basically, to that half. M80 already being a little bit more challenged. Interesting uh, from Legacy in that previous round, the fact they were using A1Ss and they were spamming through smokes, mm. they used a lot of their mags. They were running dry yeah. on ammo if that round went any longer. Very, very true. And of course, all Legacy have got to work oh, with here oh. is just the pistols. Gamble stack here through Jag. And they might just be given a fight. Swisher, it's on the corner. Mid aggression in through elbow as well. Any little peek or poke around that corner, if they're prodding towards mid, Going to be Take in a hell a photo, of a lot of trouble. <laughs> Here they are, holding and waiting. And I don't actually know if they'll be tested. The bomb is in that direction, in all fairness. There's no need to commit here. Swisher seems aware and akin to what the idea could be. And a lot of the reliance comes off what Def and Mal can do, finding out info through mid. Swisher could be in a little this bit of trouble. This body could be huge, though. It might actually force him into a fight. It'll force him to swing, and Swisher lines up two. Mal was allowed one more, but actually, this is more expensive than I think M80 would hope. Yeah, just showing the uh, how dynamic those upgraded pistols can be on that CT side. The 5.7 is so strong, as Mayo likes to mention. One tap at close range with full armor. Yeah. It's very, very dangerous. Speaking about dangers, death. Pushed uh -oh. all the way through Red Room. AK in hand. There's one. Beautiful. There's two. Goodbye, Legacy. 5 1 now. MIBR. MIBR? I looked at the M and I thought, oh, okay, that's the wrong one. <laughs> M80. MIBR long gone. Yeah, they are. To F the hands of Legacy. F's in chat. Yeah. Legacy, of course, of a great series yesterday. Back to back 13 sevens. Made that one look comfortable. And I guess for a lot of people, that was an upset as well. I mean, a lot of people were touting MIBR as 3 0 potential. It wasn't the tournament to be for them. I think coming into it, ranked 20th in the world off the top of my head. And yeah, didn't show up in the way that people would hope. And obviously, it's been a great tournament for South American teams in general, but maybe not the ones that people were expecting in some cases. I mean, Payne were definitely a question mark. Big as on that rebuild, we weren't sure what we get out of them. And of course, Legacy being, well, I guess, two maps away in this instance, away from a spot. A surprise to many. Util towards A. And they do actually get given quite a lot of space here. What do you want in towards Temple? Wreck. This feels a little reckless, but he will get caught off guard. Yeah, overextension. Ooh. And a missed trade as well. Gives Nekis an opportunity as he swings through the smoke. Down goes Death. And M80, a little lenient in terms of their control towards the site here, giving a lot of room towards their opponent. Molotov will keep them at bay. Slacks on the angle. Missed shot again from him. Looks for a third attempt at it. As he goes with the pixel peak. Oh, jeez. Time's starting to tick as well. It's more of an information play. Smoking towards Donut, but planting the bomb is the big risk here. He's going to get tapped. Is Swisher going to get tapped? That is the question. No swing from CT as of yet. Ooh. Wow. What a jump there from Cold Zera. Bartan and Nekis both convert on their own kills. Leaves Mal in a one versus five. He's good. Is he good enough? Down to 18 HP. 30 seconds on the clock. Two frags found. He's behind the head of another one, but no, it's Lato. Single bullet, all that's needed. Second round on the board for Legacy. One thing I want to mention, Slacks. Yeah, I mean, it's a single guy out. Yeah, it's, it's difficult because we expect so much after what we've seen over this RMR now. And yeah. these are incredibly inconsistent shots from him, something that we've just come to know he's hitting those every single day. Yeah, he even could be compared to kind of map one to map two. He was very good off the back of over. And yeah, a little weird there. I think it felt like 
bit of pressure on the shoulders, a bit of a panic Absolutely. when the opening kills don't go their way, and he, he feels like he needs to force it to try and level the playing field. Some crucial misses, very costly. I think, you know, Legacy found that open and double really did help them out. So, in through mid, bit of chip damage done with the util. Cold Zero sending up closer. He might get a peek, he might get an angle. He will. Death will fall. Gets caught on that corner. And there's another opener going the way of Legacy. There might be time for them to start clawing back this deficit. A five versus four. M80 now don't really know where to go. Malbs is tagged down low. I want to regress. The bomb isn't committed. That's the main thing here. If things go south, they can rotate over. And Slags falls away at that time. Just as Cold Air is re-peeking in. They're going to go for a red room push. Malbs, the low man, has cannon fodder for the first fight. Nobody meets them and greets them through red. I would usually agree with you on the cannon fodder, but this is Malb's specialty. Of finding course. angles, finding timings that usually don't exist. But Bartan, I think he is expecting this. Malb's has crossed, though. No Crossfire way. can be set up. He gets so much ground inside of CT, and I think they think it's clear. Malb's shifting from CT as the point of interest is over towards main. That has the timing. Take down Dumao. He wasn't expecting it. Molotov comes in. Oh, his neck is expecting this one. Wreck as well, swings from Red Room. Neck is needs to come up massive, but it's Malbs again with a frag. 16 points of HP, and he's still finding kills. Saves. They've got to call it. They have to call for a save. They can't even warrant the idea behind an attempt here. Man alive. Like you said, it's all down to Malbs. The fact that he gets the timing there, I mean, I, I, you got to really... I, hold, I think it's Barton holding that cross yeah. from long. The timing is brutal. That's the information as well, because yeah. he's crossed it. And he's like, oh, guys, there's no one there. Don't worry about it. That's why they don't even think yeah. about CT. They've really, you know, his missed relay of information is actually really costly. He's holding that flank through Red Room, but he turns away for half a second just as he maneuvers back over towards short, and it costs them the round. The smallest mistakes, the most incremental errors. Oh, if he costs legacy. Kill. <laughs> if yeah, he gets this kill on cold. Oh, God, Melbs. Nah, he's just going to tuck it. Staying alive is the priority. Doesn't need to give away a rifle or at least drop it. Keeping the cash building up is the priority of M80. But another half already where, you know, very early doors, they've guaranteed at the bare minimum a tied game. But the way they're playing, we expect more. It was actually the T side that they struggled against when they played up against Odic in the, uh, the opening B01, of course, that one that they were able to secure. It was T-side, which looked a little bit more weak. Mm. Odic taking that, um, well, 7-4. Still the CT side for M80 available. Yeah. That's where they're going to be putting up the bulk of their rounds. They can find a 7 here, secure the half, then dear Lord, that anything that can slow this freight train that's clearly got no brakes. That's what gets tagged. Most importantly, information gain, right? That's the big thing about HEs. Do they expect a double stack up close? MP9 on the corner. Lato posted like a turret here, waiting for this first fight. And if Swisher appears around this corner, it could be in a little bit of trouble. A re-smoking towards ramp will just force M80 to once again pump those brakes, but not under pressure in terms of time here. Plenty to work with. They themselves, though, in comes the Uto. Molotov at least will force out a fight in some regard, but Slags can't get up in time. Still gets the kill nonetheless. And again, it's on towards Nekis. That was the story of Overpass. An opening kill going their way. That'll give them room to force a double back out of cave because they know Ramp is a liability. Fully committing now to this B bomb site. A final hold from Cold Zera. Over on A, just in it's case smoke. they move over. Yeah, the smoke time is absolutely perfect. Nade goes in, it's not going to clear it. Bartan expecting someone to be close here. As we can see, of Ooh. course, Wreck is there, but oh, the smoke doesn't clear everything. Bartan still has no idea, and here comes the spam, here comes the push. He's going to get tagged. I wonder if it's heard. It is. Lato going to be good for on Switcher. The MP9 not going to be able to convert onto anything here. And now it's just Dumao. Cosera. They have save, to save right? again. Yeah. This is a really rough situation. Legacy never have any stability built up in terms of their economy. So in these situations where you can maybe warrant the, the attempt at a retake, they can't. They know that the risk is much higher than the reward in this situation. Yes, finding a third round would be great, but if they lose anybody, it means no attempt to rebuy. And even with two staying alive, it's still probably not really going to be possible. 
Lost bonus is built up, yes, but there's nothing really going to work in terms of drops. Bard likes like MP9s, and mm. even then, Death might Barrel deny spotted. Barrel Spotted. Cold Zera repositions, but Death will find him. Doesn't matter that Doom Owl answers back. The Orb, yes, collected, but that is all Legacy are going to have to work with heading in towards the next. Seven to two, there's the guarantee of a lead and the first time out by Legacy. I mean, it goes without saying, you know, maybe a little bit late, but better late than never. Yeah, absolutely. They're not just uh, blowing them all in the first half like yeah. we've seen uh, plenty of teams do. It, that tells me that the mental for Legacy is better mm. than off the back of what we saw in Overpass. Yeah. However, are they actually going to be able to make anything of this? I mean, we've seen a lot of teams, both in North America, both in South America, yeah. able to convert straight off the back of these timeouts. And I think with, with Neckers' calling as well, or he said earlier today, like, always falling back on a little bit more of a default style of, uh, of yeah. calling instead of, like, these tricky skill plays and these all big setups. Yeah. I mean, is it going to be enough for Legacy to be able to convert around and gain a third here? You know, we and in those kind of tack pauses, while well, we look towards Chucky, man, this is a yep. guy with so much experience, one of the most revered coaches within the region, and not even just the region, internationally as well. What can he do to try and salvage this sinking ship? It's taken on water and Legacy's chances of making it to the Holy Grail of the Major. Look like they might be going down with a ship. Two rounds, all they've got so far. Barton, good aggression, proactivity from the CT side, Malbs will fall. It's a great opening kill. A reposition, Red going into the fight, and his shot! Uncharacteristic from Cold, and it nearly cost him. The Molotov will tickle him as well, but he still remains alive, posted towards main. The Shadow Spotted running away as well. At the very least, immediate support not needed. Plenty of time. Yes. Plenty of time to be able to reevaluate what on earth is going on. And this is where Death is going to step into his own here. The experience as the coach, now coming in the server, and an experience as the player as well. Going to be able to redefine what this round is for M8, but Damal is looking to ensure that that is not the case. He finds two heads inside of mid, spots out the AWP of Slacks, just trying to bait that shot so he can go for the swing. The Molotov's there to be able to force him out. He does push and he does indeed find that kill. Four versus two now closer to being obtainable. But we're cold on this angle. He needs to not whiff again. Wreck has no use This is the Orca thing. Wreck knows he has to basically fight his way in towards the site and they've got no information about what the setup is. Oh, he finds it through the smoke. That'll change things. Two versus three. Yes, time ticking, but a bomb going to go down. Do not not exactly covered, and neither is CT. Slacks needs to go superb here. No scope is not going to come off in time. Lato and Barton keep things alive. I thought they were in a little bit of trouble when Cold misses that opening shot, but thankfully rotates come at an apt time. And old Legacy give themselves a chance. A sigh of relief as well for Legacy. Uh, they, they, they need anything now in the, in the tail end of this half. This isn't the first time we've seen that happen as well, where the final two players from M80 have been able to just secure almost that A bomb site. Of course, this time shut down when the plant didn't come through. If that plant goes down, Slax finds one more kill. Oh my god, like, y you can't keep letting that happen as a CT side. I think the the kind of mid-round re-aggression from Legacy there is really good. Oh, shelf. Tumal gets a double, can he do it again? No, only one, but arguably good enough. His information gained on the edge of the smoke. Malb goes creeping out and he will be clipped as Neckers deletes him and keeps hold and control in towards mid. Swisher. Now we'll go peering in towards Cave. Nobody's there to meet him, so at the very least, there's a bit of space for M80 to work with here. But I'm going back over towards Ramp. But a minute to work with. Flash goes in. Smoke as well. It's about to block off that long slight line for Slacks. Nick is on the hunt. See what he can find right now. Swisher's so crossed it, and this is a thing where Barton's swinging out. He'll jiggle peek on the corner, but he might actually not expect Swisher over in towards the corner. Now he will. The smoke coming through into a short. Molotov out towards Long. Surprised that landed. Barton beckoning over the rotate as well. Swisher will keep himself tucked. Bomb goes down. Yes, the numbers do favor Legacy. And quite considerably down on two versus four. It's still a doable scenario. If they can isolate a couple of frags, this may be the conversation. Flash is good. Shot, not so much. Slacks will miss. The flank is good as well. Labored, but Neck is getting nonetheless. 
and one-man army. Swisher needs something, needs a miracle if he wants a chance, and he's not even given an inch. Cold Zero will drop him, and Legacy gonna find a fourth heading into that final round of the half. There is a chance. Could he a 7-5 half? That's workable. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot more than what they had to work with on that first map, for <laughs> sure. Both Orpers not truly stepping to the levels that we would expect from them in this game as of yet. Slacks missed a couple of shots. We're seeing Cole do the same as well. Yeah. One very important kill in this round actually came here from Lato. As the bomb gets planted, Rep getting taken down. We know how influential we can be on these CT-sided holds and anchors, but in the post plant as well, yeah. holding it down is usually where he shines. And not being able to do that, getting spammed out before he can even see an opponent, not great for M18, and of course it converts into a round there for Legacy. Absolutely. There will be some sort of a buy. They've gone for the force here, of course. It is the last round, so the expectation is that. We've got a triple Mac 10. A D. D. And a Lord. tech 9. Malbs will get out in front of the smoke. Yes, he falls, but a human flashbang. A switch of finds one. A Defilon to back for Lato. Ooh. What a reaction from Lato. What a flick, head on a swivel getting the fall of Lato, locking it down. And look what it means to Legacy. Look what it means to the confidence now as his side starts to come back alive. They're now finding the form that we expect our Legacy. I'd love to see Lato 1v4 as well in through Cave. That was some trick. Look at this, look how crazy the spray doesn't stop. Oh, oh my God, takes two out as they're coming in towards Cave. He can't even believe it either. He's like, what on earth is that? My mouth was a gape He's off just the back like of it. Look at this. One, two. Oh, I think there's someone to my right. I'm going to spam you down, take him out, and flick on through to rip the head clean off of Slacks as well. Damn. That's the tempo that we need to be seeing from Legacy into the second half. He's just like me, for real. That's great work. That I really played MM with you. That doesn't, that's factually <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> well, what can Legacy now do a pistol round here? Man, we are going to potentially open the door to a conversation. If Legacy found a pistol and deny MAT getting too proactive in terms of the kills, there's a world this game just goes 7-7 seven to seven and then it's game absolutely on. Have to wait and see. A couple of taps from Death down mid. Right idea as well. As he catches them crossing or trying to catch them crossing. But they are given shelf control. I swish will sit. Back at the exit of the cave as well. Doesn't want to overextend. Molotov as well will force him oh, out of that perfect. position. Where did it miss? Gonna find a couple of taps, but he will fall. Neck is good swing. Malb's there to try and reclaim space. The flash needs to get slacks into the action, but he can't. Death tapping away. Damage dealt, but not the kill just yet. All the fights going the way of Legacy, but Malb's might have other ideas here. Gets one himself, but the bomb goes down nonetheless. And M80, this retake's not easy. Not easy at all. They have the numbers to work with, but Cold Zera will bring it back down to the two versus two. Lato try not to overface, but he will find one. It's Julie's two pistols, two kills to find, and Lato gives him nothing. Lato, who closed the half, starts it well as well. Yeah, that's really, really nice from Legacy. We saw Wreck. Rotating all the way around from the A-bomb site through mid. Got, looked like he was going to go absolutely nuclear with those dual Berettas, but only able to find one as he begins his approach. It was a lot of rounds together in short succession for M80 in that first half. Yeah. The tail end completely dictated by Legacy. It was three rounds back to back. And now with the fourth one here as well. Oh, God, and the nades into mid as well. We'll have to get taken down. The pace is still being dictated by the T side. However, after losing someone early here, Neck is getting dropped down to 64 HP as well, putting the rest of these kind of eco weapons for M80 in a much more lethal position. Certainly winnable for the CTs. The force is such a risk here. Regular sort of close, does he get cleared? He does. However, Neck is buffs his lines, and Reg does more damage towards Dumal. Surely not. M9. Close, but no cigar. Dumal will get a kill. He stays alive just. Get him his teeth type. Stop! And Rec gets caught in rotation. Ooh. Cold Zero makes it too. This round looked like it was getting put by the wayside, and Cold Zero might go for more, but he doesn't close his angles. Oh, and Mouse finds two. Surely not. A 1v1 Swisher versus Dumao. Dumao is so low. A smoke towards CT, a bomb plant to come through, and Swisher's going for the big flank as well. He might just get timing with Dumao. Oh, 
got the right ideas, a gun to work with, a flash in the back pocket, an opportunity as well for M80 to convert a force as Dumao looks for all the angles. Swisher's not giving him anything. Swisher might just tap here as well. He wants to bait in a fight. Time's starting to take. You don't have a lot to work no with. Kit. He's got to go here and now. Does have a flash. Dumal does need to peek and he's too smart to as well. Knows how low he is. Time is dwindling. Spotted and Dumal. Another huge round from him. Three kills to his Ooh. name. And look what it means to Dumal. What a round. But man, that should not have been that close. And I think, you know, Dumal done well, but that round for me, credit to Cold. Yeah, that was that was really, really nice. He, he almost messed it up a little bit when he cleared the angle and, of course, didn't uh, didn't end up punishing them too hard. Mm. Malb's finding those two kills. God, he's so good on the deagle. You can't really give him an inch. And I mean, give him two heads. Almost good for the third there and soloing the round. It's going to be a timeout here for Legacy, as a matter of fact, off the back of that. And what do you think that is now? I think they just need to calm down a little bit, right? You, you can see them get a little antsy in these situations. I think there's a good opportunity as well for Chucky just to be like, that's right, let's just slow things down. We now know that was a force out of them. We heard the scout, we heard the MP9s, and we saw the upgraded, you know, kind of guns. Oh, uh, I didn't even spot that. Yeah, no, yeah, through the smoke. It's one of those things I think is, for now, Legacy understand the situation they're in. Advantage absolutely in their court. <laughs> Wind in their sails. This is a really good opportunity for them to get very close to closing out this map. They know that M81 have a lot to work with in terms of an investment. So, what feels like a freebie of an eighth round on the cards here. Just make sure it's not that expensive and Legacy should be fine. Allow me to draw your attention to one important thing. Malbs has a deagle. Mm -hmm. T-side, aggression with this weapon. Brutal. Can he do the same on the defense when he's the solo holding player over on the B-bomb site? Going to be that four-man stack over on A. And I mean, three of them are pretty damn close. One holding long. But all the attention right now is on B, is on Mounds. Will be the first Guatemalan player to qualify for a major if they can convert this map. Go 2-0 above Legacy. And ensure the American flag is also there. Malbs needs to go huge. Ooh. It's the head of the Mal. Rips it clean from the shoulders. Guillotined. Neckers gets that bomb planted. But now, with the reinforcements here from M80, the lurk shut down by Lato. Can they convert? P250 and a Deagle. Two Deagles, as a matter of fact, available for Malbs. Death, Swisher. Only this USP for Slacks. And the spam begins for Neckers. Bartan there to be able to ensure that this does not fall out of hand. Only a consolation kill, but not a bad one by any means. It was actually quite well played from Legacy there. They just made sure that the pace was slowed down quite considerably. Double smokes one out to a short one too long. A Molotov behind it as well. Make sure that basically MAT just simply don't, put, don't have the time to work with. Closing the gap. All well and said. Legacy find themselves 8-7. to seven, A lead in their favor. One in which they desperately look to keep hold of this time. It's eluded them throughout this series. It will be a buy back in for M80 and an AWP in the back pocket of Slacks. We've questioned a couple of his shots so far with some uncharacteristic misses. Especially as, at least in the early part of this half, Cole Zero starts to come alive a little bit. Look towards Slacks' response. Rec, elevates an angle. It's a great angle to hold this. Your shadow spot on the corner of that wall, so Rec can basically get a freebie of a molly down before any fights come through. Right way to play it, because he gets a free kill. It's Slacks' nade that sees off Dumal as Dumal tries to force it through the Molotov. And that might let Legacy down a little bit. 4v5. They go back towards mid, but it actually looks like now they want to rotate away, but they have so little information about what the holes looking like. They're actually quite confused, and they overface in towards mid. Yeah, lucky on the timing here. They've learned their lesson from Overpass, have Legacy. Just losing one body doesn't completely shut down the round, but Neck is getting taken down also in mid. Uh, maybe now this is difficult. Um, not a single frag found. Chip damage here and there, of course, does allow the Galils to uh, do a little bit more work onto Swisher and onto Slacks, but they are holding very deep angles. And maybe you don't have a lot of youth on the back pocket, and this is the thing that worries me. Flashing a smoke. Two that smokes. bomb goes down. There is a world that Legacy can use. They have slightly larger belts of util to their favor. Colzo are going to go up high, and high here. And the util starts to come through. Double Molly's coming in as well. And Rek just 
waiting for his moment to shine. Doesn't need to overface. Yes, Swisher is low, but as long as Rex is alive, it's always a nuisance. Ooh. But down he goes to Barton. Now there's a chance. Bomb plant for Donut. This is a good way to play it. And a smoke in through CT. They're going to fight through it. And it might not work. <gasps> no, it won't. Barton finds more. Lato. He's back to back with oh, that. No two. Lato lines them up. Man, that fell apart so quickly. And Legacy now winning every clutch. This is something that M80 had on the lock and key in overpass. And Legacy now doing exactly the same back to them. This is starting to smell like an Inferno map three. And again, it comes at the hand of Wreck. Not able to find a frag in the round, holding down, locking down Donut, the faces just a little bit too early. Has to see if he can find a kill, of course, but oh, it's just a little bit sloppy on the fade of that smoke. Death, I think even if an angle was being held towards CT due yeah. to that timing, he still would have been dead, no matter if he was that close or not. Might be going to the heads a little bit here, bro, matey. Need to get back into this one. Really nice angle being held here from Death, and I don't think they've heard this. Oh no, the Molotov to come in. Never mind, I take it straight back too, as a matter of fact. Is forced off the corner. Still going to be holding on this cubby position. Nades come in and he is still going to be almost full HP, ready and waiting to fight a single T that pushes on through. Good smoke. Great smoke. Just keep them at bay. Slow things down a little bit. And P9. That's an information play. Look and see if you can get a tag behind it. Tough to beat. Now they can go out through mid. I don't think Swisher wants to stick around for a fight, but the 5 7 now knows that they're out in towards mid. That's two that he spotted. One up through shelf. Bits of a tag, but no kill just yet as we creep inside of the minute mark. Close to close. Death not being held by his teammate, so he'll fall for free, but no surprises to anybody that Miles will get one with the Deeg. Lato dropped. 4v4, do not count out the pistols. These close range angles can be awkward and with 35 seconds on the clock, they play for the crossfire in through cave. Not the easiest clear in the world. The bomb still stays committed towards this B site as well. They've got to go here and now. Bomb going to be dropped. Util starting to be signed up as well towards this site as they'll stick up close. Slack's got the right idea. Slack spotted one, but now he's known quantity. Need to hit these. There's one. Bart's gonna find one with the molly as Doom I will answer two. A two versus two. A safe plant will be the call as well. And the Deagle comes around the corner. Swinging into the fight. And Doom Owl by the skin of his teeth stays alive. Legacy. The first side to lock in 10. Could have been huge. Probably should have been. Huge from M80 there. Instead, Legacy do so, so well to be able to convert that round. Double digits on the board is now correctly said. Another tactical timeout going to be called by Legacy. Their third and final one to ensure they can get this over the line. Make sure all of their numbers are correct in their head. Do they have a buy? That is the thought process now. And it's almost certainly yes. As we can see, four M4s. The AWP in the hands of Slacks. Util Belt. Full. This should have been absolutely mad. If Swisher finds two, yeah. that would have changed the dynamic of the round completely. Then we could see the push coming through from Cave and maybe Coldzera isn't ready and waiting for Malbs, who we know who can hit those one digs. And look at what it means to them, man. I mean, Dumao is going massive in some of these rounds. He's finding opening picks when it needs to, and he's closing down the rounds when it's required as well. Push into mid hit. A lot of information. Death trying to gain it himself. Couple of spams, that's but that's basically yeah. Yeah, this is nice. Good proactivity out of the CT side. Sometimes they've been a little lackluster in terms of their Ooh. mid takes. Oh, Lato full blind. Swisher gets domed. No idea what hit him. And Lato didn't even realize he had hit him. There's an opener for Legacy. All the luck. Quite comfortably in their favor thus far. And August quite off the back of it. M80. Gonna pump the brakes in his aggression because. I mean, to a degree, this starts to come riskier and riskier since they don't have the numbers. It's all well and good trying to get all of these information plays and gaining full lane control as we have seen the CTs do. Previous round, when they forced up, they gained it. Now doing it on the full buy as well. Legacy. They like to run these rounds down to just the few fleeting moments. Around 20 seconds is when they begin their executes, usually hell. They might even wait for 15 if they're close enough to a bomb site. With 40 on the clock, some util being committed into mid, into lane. 
This could tell them everything they need to know. Slacks finding that opening pick inside of mid, bringing us now down to a four versus four. Malbs needs to go massive. Double setup here as well. Malbs up close. <gasps> Gets two. Malbs looking for oh. three. And Malbs mows them down. Magic man Malbs will make sure the round goes the way of M80 and keeps the dream alive. Legacy did not clear their corners and they let themselves down. A change of pace here from M80 as well. Getting aggy, getting aggressive, getting up towards them instead of holding back on their lows, sitting onto the bomb sites. Slack's getting aggressive inside of mid. Malb's getting aggressive. He didn't even reload. Eight bullets in the mag and he takes down two more. My God. He does so much work in these rounds when he's called upon. Legacy. The first round there for M80. Legacy need to respond with haste. If they do not, the tempo can switch incredibly quickly. Great calling from depth to be able to make the timing work out there. Look at the buy as well now for Legacy. Information spotted. Slacks are trying to get out of there. They will run through the Molotov, but Slacks giving a freebie. Looks for a second flash on the angle. So is the rifle. So the sight is lost, but surprise to nobody that Malbs will step up for one. Hot and drop through the smoke, and Malbs doesn't need to overface. Three versus five as Legacy. They're questioning, can they even be given the comfort over the plant here? On the corner, Neck is trying to level the playing field, and Wreck will respond effectively. Down goes Neck is Lato and Cold, left with it all to do. A 2v5 for the ages to try and find 11, and they might be given that luxury. Lato for one, death in response. And Cold Zera, what a clutch this would be, but I don't think it's on the cards. Would be something. But Malb's other ideas, gorgeous, again, from the Guatemalan. And M80, make it a one-round game. Bringing it back. Two rounds back-to-back -back now after a completely just unheard of half. I, I mean, actually, I'm going to take that back instantly because every single round that Legacy have been able to convert, M80 have still been there. Yes. They've still been getting frags. Even, even on those eco rounds, those force buy rounds, they've still been that thorn inside of Legacy. Exactly. To be able to ensure they do not forget that they are in this server, in this game, in this best of three to qualify for the very first CS2 Major. And that round there, it, it basically Ooh. feels like a bit of a two for one special because it breaks the back and breaks the econ over towards Legacy. Leaves those wallets mighty thin and full of dust. So no investment here in towards round 20. So M80, by all of our metrics and all of our understanding, should be able to find a bit of a freebie of a 10th. As long as they don't fluff the lines there, we have got a game on our hands. 10 all is the expectation. Now just make sure it's clean. Nothing crazy from this round from M80. Def knows when to call it. When they need those desperation rounds, they will go for them. When they know their opponent's economy is not great, they won't put them in the most advantageous position for their weapons. I mean, you really want to close the gap with these Tech 9s. And well, I say Tech 9s, uh, Tech 9 in the hands of Cold Zera. A Deagle available as well for Bartan. But they're rethinking this now. Might be repositioning themselves towards mid. Yeah. Only 35 seconds on the clock though, Nao. Again, they're running down the timer and with no util whatsoever, Legacy needs to go. And the biggest thing is M80 haven't been baited into using all their, their util early. Yeah. So in a worst case scenario, the bomb goes down, they still have plenty to work with and now they're going to pop on towards the side. Malv's got a huge before. Need more from him again, but only gets one as Death will onto one of his own. Oh, the, the Molotov, Molotov might just do it and it might just burn them to a crisp. Swisher for two, but he wants low on ammo. And an AK collected by Lato, surely not. This would be insane, but Def denies. Making sure that's not a conversation to be had. I said as long as it's not messy, it was a tad, but a round is a round. We now find ourselves 10 apiece. Game on, and the hunt for the all elusive 13 continues. Yeah, getting that bomb plant there is incredibly important for Legacy. Their recon, still not great. I mean, they've True. been able to fall by here, but. Lost bonus will have to, well, we'll get them out of this tough situation next round. Yeah. But they don't want to be thinking about that. No, no, no. They want that win bonus. They want to ensure that they go to 11 first. They've been on this marker for the past three rounds. And M80 finally starting to come alive. The Molotov burning down neck is a, Molotov, a smoke has to be committed. And he starts pushing between smoke and smoke to smoke. 
and all the ground has been gained. Molotov into Red Room to be able to force Wreck into a fight here. Nades come in and Wreck completely blind. Neck is... Oh! No. They walk past each other! Like ships in the night! But Neck is turns around to pick up another one! Malbs! Oh my lord! Has to try and bail them out again! But it's a three versus four! Oh, that's the antithesis of what you need! Swisher needs to go huge here, holding inside of Jag, waiting for someone to cross. They have an inkling. The flash comes in. He looks away for Anti. To mount, swings the corner, but it's the wrong one. And Swisher finds two. Down to 17 HP, but the damage has been done. Sumptuous from Swisher. Gives them a chance, brings them back into this round. As once again, we go now inside of the minute mark, and it's all left down to Cold Zero and Barton. Bomb rotates over. Swisher has given them a shot in this round after the early... Mistakes and errors from Slacks and Wreck, who lost their lines just a tad, given Neck is his opportunities. Bomb in tow, and a Molotov is all that T-Side have to work with. This is not going to be an easy plant. M80, even playing retake here, the advantage is in their court. Yes, Swisher is low. They've got the numbers, and even so, a little bit more in those back pockets. Double smoke, Molly, and a flash to work with. And already there's one in towards Donut. That's going to make the difference here. Bomb going to go down. Martin will get it. One spotted and death falls. Now this changes. No one near to death to trade. Swisher so low. A lot of the reliance now becomes on Malbs. The Molotov here from Cold Zero could be absolutely huge as well if he times it correctly. He is going to get Molly off himself and that now completely negates him for the next like 10, 15 Smoke. seconds in the round. And oh my god, they're just going to hold it. Oh, it was close, but it's not going to be enough as Barton swings on through from main and Legacy are the side to be able to gain 11 first. It came down to a three versus two. We thought the damage has been done by Swisher. Yeah. Evidently not the case as the South Americans come alive off the server and in, and this was rough inside of mid. Wreck is usually so good for those, and he just whiffs it. I mean, we thought Lato spray transfer was pretty good. That's up there. That's great. That was really something. The IGL as well, of course, yeah. for Legacy. Not normally the man you look towards in terms of the fragging department for Legacy, but single-handedly giving them a shot there. Cold Zera eats a grenade. Down to 50. Barty boss is lined, and he's not punished. Somehow, some way, he's still alive. Skin of his teeth, six points of HP. And Legacy, quite rightfully so, pump the brakes and reverse it up out of there. They do not want to stick around. I'll leave one on the lurk, one to try and hold for flanks, but they're going to reset. Cole can't keep getting away with that. Yeah, they, they don't need to overextend. Uh, and, you know, Cole's a lucky man. If he falls there, that completely changes how this round feels. At least for now, M80 have to say, maybe a little bit overly committed towards A, just because of the info they gained early. Cole, who, as you mentioned, looks like he stepped back into a time machine, has rolled back the years across this event, especially in yesterday's best of three. Top of the server by some fair margin. We needed to see that from him today as well. Hasn't been as clean as the Cold Zero that we know and love, but has stepped up to the plate when it has been required. Oh, they jump across. They see the, oh, they see the shadows, though. Death's good for two. Cold Zero and Lato trade them back, but there's still a presence over on this A bomb site. And oh, bomb down inside a CT spawn. Time. And the hands are slacks. The time is running out. You're completely right. The flash comes in. Wreck, unknown quantity at this point. The spam continues. Mal picks up one. It's going to be 11-11 at this point as Demal gets taken down. M80, a perfect response. And now we have to look towards the economy. Is it enough for Legacy? I don't think it is. It's going to be a heavy force from them. Pretty clean round as well. All things considered, only the two casualties you take all day. That is so rough. I really thought they heard Slacks as well. Initially, as he's running down long, I thought they would have heard that. But I think maybe in the heat of the moment, it wasn't to be. They dip oh, in towards a hero AK in the back pocket of Barton. And they hope for magic from him. This is not easy. Eats a bit of an aid early. No head armor either, not exactly. A nice situation to find themselves in. He has crossed on the left-hand side, but he will fall That's immediately. Gone. Barton gets one, yes. With the rifle at range, he'll find a couple. Oh, 
staying alive, staying tucked in towards Cubby, and might get an opportunity to jump a few more full blind damage dealt, but no frag gives an opportunity, but not unless Swisher has something to do about it. Map and series point, M80 are one round away from the major. They lost their IGL prior to the tournament. The coach of death had to step back in after a massive hiatus from Counter-Strike. And he now finds himself only moments away from the first CS2 major at what, 32 years of age? What a story it will be for, for, for Def individually, but for M80 as a whole. Five years out of competitive play in Counter-Strike. Comes back when the team he coaches for needs it. Steps up to the plate. Taken down early, but now this allows him to be the voice in the back of his team's head. The position that he usually plays. The coaching role on his shoulders now. And the remaining four fraggers on the server that he's helped mold and build on this M80 roster could be the one hope for North America at this major. They're going to leave one towards A here. Not an over-rotation. It's, it's kind of standard, especially the early information they heard, but the bomb's rotating away from B. Wreck himself, going to play the passive angle. Knows that red room. Oh, this is, is a bit of a vulnerability. Lato holding for flanks too. Lato, he's at his moments as much as most. And he might just be given an opportunity. Elevated angle, Lato on the corner. Here's a step away, but Lato finds only one. Slacks tagged down low, but he's still alive is all that matters. A record to give this a go as they rotate back towards A. Flash on the corner, both sides. And a Molotov will keep him at bay. Three versus four, bomb goes down, and now there's a clock above M80's head. Can they get back into the site, or is more rounds in regulation needed? Is overtime required to decide a victor on Ancient? M80's pick, but Legacy still not dead just yet. Not six feet under, not if Duval has anything to do about it. We'll find one as record fall with a low HP of Slacks. The onus on Swisher to come alive. He falls and overtime is required. Cody, regulation not enough. Legacy not done just yet. No. Down but not out. They were in the lead for a strong majority of this second half really dictating the pace. You see them getting vocal as well off the server. You don't see it from M80. They've fallen asleep a little bit at the wheel here. The comeback started towards the tail end. Round after round was chained together. And when it mattered the most, it fell apart. Welcome to overtime. Everyone who's watching this should know how this works. First to 16 wins. If we do not have a winner, if we go to 15-15, we reset it. OT2, you keep on pushing. First team to win four rounds. 12-12, Swisher, aggressive, over towards the lane. With the backup there from the IGL, Death as well. Malb's even thinking about wanting to get involved with this one. It's a nade is committed, and Legacy, still not showing face as of yet. Well, he's not quite the top of the scoreboard just yet. The man who's been so influential on these T-side rounds, Dumao, five opening kills to his name. Constantly finding so much space, manipulating all of these gaps within the M80 defense. It's working. Get towards the minute mark, and Legacy haven't really committed anywhere. Smoke going to come through in towards mid, and there's now at least a bit of an idea of where they want to head. Bombs will say it's committed towards B, and three players here to meet them. Death will be smoked out in through Jack. He holds an aid. He holds for any information. It's not given. An aid comes through, but does nothing. Now oh, they pop through. Swisher will drop one of his own. A Molotov Molly. behind it as well as he tucks in towards the cubby. Swisher swings, but Swisher fails. Thankfully, Malb's there to bail him out, and the Molly keeps them at bay. 30 seconds to work with, and Death could come up huge here. Do they clear him? Because this is where Swisher was playing from. If Death pulls the trigger now, he could find a couple, and he won't. One, not quite the second. is cold or reacting time. Two versus three, but the swing is good. Wreck only good for one of his own, and Slack's left alone. Going to be getting aggressive, shotgun orping. Knows at least one of them is low. Is Dumal known right now? He is, and he whips the shot. It's a 13th for Legacy. It was a tall order to rely on your orper in that situation. The close angle certainly not advantageous for the long rifle. Quiet off the server for M80 right now. 
comic, ensuring that every single bit of information is clear. One more kill there from death. And do you know what? This is the first time we actually get to look at what kind of the mental resilience looks like for M80. This is the yep. first time where they've actually been kind of truly backed against the wall with they're really actually losing a little bit of control of this game. Momentum's not in their favor. Legacy have started well in towards overtime. You know, the entirety of map one, there was never a question mark who was taking it off the back of the first like five rounds. We knew what the end result was going to be there, but man, Legacy have made M80 work it. And Legacy looking like they want to push this towards an inferno. If you crack open the door of a third map, who knows? Hey, John Anecdote does say all good best. Threes are decided on Inferno. That might be the case, but Neck is Floss's his line. Doom out doesn't. Straight on towards Swisher. 4v4. Traditionally, trades benefit the T side, but where do they go with it? Slax has found so many influential frags inside of mid here. Flash comes through, and I think Slax is ready for it. Does miss the shot, but blind, so we can give him the benefit of the doubt here. Death. Playing an angle that Swisher would usually hold, and well, the information's now given up. Lato, lucky to have the head left there. Flash goes in. With the backup there from Malbs, who we know can perform some miracles. Smoke goes in. Death's gonna swing. They think that may be the only player there, but Malbs on the corner, yet to be revealed, yet to execute. Our legacy gonna push this. Smoke. Blocks off one of the sight lines, but we see a retaliation here from the CTs. Time ticking down once again. Everything blocked off, and now they hightail it over towards A, and this is an amazing call from Death to be able to make them rotate over as well. It's going to be fair Counter-Strike. It's going to be three. Versus three, and he misses two. Wreck picks up absolutely nothing but chip damage onto Dumal. Slacks looking for the head, he keeps on whipping, but Malb's looking to be able to battle them out of this round. Taken down by Cold Zero, it's the Orpa to come out clutch once again. Is he going to be able to find these final two to negate a round again for Legacy? Leg spotted, head taken off his shoulders, looking for Cold Zero, or the Orp spotted out, and he doesn't miss those. It's 14 to 12, Legacy with only one more round in this first half of OT1 are looking to make this quick. And Slack's way too many missed opportunities. The two guys who swing out for first, he has to find minimum one of them. And the fact that he doesn't actually really lets them down. Wreck gets caught, isolated there. He does damage, but he's so blind. He, I think, was hoping at least the orb would be able to trade him out, but it's not the case. It does let M80 down, spacing an issue. And the post plant, perfect from Cold Zera. Brilliant, brilliant work from him. Look at the buy on the CT size now, Nao. I mean, yeah, this man. is just a force buy. Not what you want to be seeing in OT at all. MP9's on three. A Deagle on Swisher. And a mass of all things on death. Oh, this is so brutal. Oh, Swisher. You might get an <gasps> opportunity here. Body shots, but kills are all the same. So we should get to Nike. Now we can work with an upgrade. Everybody's got better. guns across the board at the very least. More needed. The need to catch Legacy a little bit more off guard before there's even a chance there. Death sticks up close. Great reaction from Doom out. A rotation going to come through from Swish, and he might actually get a bit of a timing, but he did hear the information through Red Room, so he doubles back. And speaking of, there's a double stack in towards Cave. As they stay up close, Wreck reclaiming some info, info in through Main. He'll post up. At the very least, if he just stays there and swats and hears nothing, that's enough to say, okay, you can commit towards B, which is kind of what they're going for. We were talking about the calling style of Nekis earlier on, the fact that they like to rely on defaults just a little bit more, have a very solid default, and then your opponents, well, you just got to try and force them into these bad engagements. Oh, oh. oh nice Maybe. come in, but all oh, the timing. Him, yeah. yeah, spots to Mal. Let his teammate know that he's there. Slash is going to go for the push here. Damal takes down one. Lato, one of his own as well. As Malbs through the smoke falls. Damal heading the swivel as he picks up Rex. Maswisha taken down 15 to 12. It needs to be a perfect T side from M80. And that wasn't their strongest one. No, not at all, man. This is so much better from Legacy. This is a side revived. Looking to push this towards the side and looking to give us all three maps. And M80 look dejected for the first time in this series. This is a side who have no answers, no responses to everything Legacy throw at them. For the first day in two days, honestly. Yeah. Yesterday, they all looked hype as well. I mean, mm -hmm. there was a couple of rounds that didn't go their way against Wildcard. I mean, that entire map that didn't go their way. But they still looked like, out of the server, that they were in this. 
what's happened now? The mentals starting to tick, starting to yeah. change. And we need to see something huge here from an 80. Because as of right now, they've fallen completely flat. Oh, hello, Dumal. Uh, being a little audacious, I'm a fan. They're both clearing it. Mal's been pretty good here. The flash, however, actually works against him. He tucked his head and Swish is able to tuck himself in towards Cubby. Here's the opener. Going the, the way of the T side. And I guess Ram 80 at this point, they'll take absolutely anything. Legacy. Got so many deep angles in through mid, though. This is the big thing. Neck has got an opportunity, but he's kind of exposed to two different angles. He knows that there's a risk. Especially if he can find one, there's a world. Trade comes through, but information gained on his shots from Lato. Gives Death an opportunity. Trades it immediately. Barton on the corner. Looks for an answer back. 2v3. Time starts the tick, but Barton looking to close this one in his favor. It's Cold Zero alongside him. Slack's given the sight, but his inconsistencies have plagued him. He doesn't need to overextend. Cold Zero's reclaiming spacing through mid as well, so they know where this bomb's going, they know where it's heading, oh, and he might get to stop it. Cold Zero can. Wreck all fall. That's the bomb, and Slax has got it all to do. Bomb dropped by Wreck, and Cold Zero's given them a chance. This might be map three written all over it, and he plants open, plants for a fight, and he misses his shot. Map three needed. Legacy, stay alive, and we head towards Inferno. They say all good best of threes are decided on Inferno. Well, ladies and gents, for a major spot, we're going to find our desk. What have you got to say? Legacy, legacy, legacy. Trying the absolute hardest to continue.